Hello everybody, and welcome to my NAS build. Before I start showing you all the parts and whatnot, I would like to point out that the $250 price point is based on the entire system without hard drives. And I have priced it this way because I know that everybody's needs vary, and they may need more, or they may need less storage. So I have not included that because that is something that will vary from person to person. However, I figure that if you're looking at this type of video, if you're looking at my build, you already have an idea of what you need for storage. So I'm just going to give you the hardware aspect of what I've bought. So, starting out here, this is a Corsair CX430. It's obviously a 430 watt power supply. 80 plus certified, which is definitely something I was interested in purchasing because I want this to be not only a powerful NAS box, but also an energy efficient one. So taking everything out, we've got the power supply itself. I'm going to unwrap it at a later date. Not a later date, just a later time. Um, these things are pretty much bulletproof. I use these in all the builds that I do at work. Um, I do some custom builds for people occasionally, and they work perfectly. I've never had one DOA, and they continue to work for, uh, I would hope, the future. So that's what I purchased. Um, I believe after mail-in rebate, this cost me $24. So there's the power supply, which I'll move off to the side. The next thing is the motherboard. This, of course, is one of the main parts of the computer itself. Um, this is an ASRock AM1B, and it's a mini ITX motherboard. I chose the mini ITX, first of all, because it's small. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room in the case, and it's also lower powered than any other board that I was looking at before. So if I take this out, we will see that it is indeed a mini ITX motherboard, brand new in the packaging. And I should point out, this is the first ever computer build that I've done for myself, not including work, that I've used 100% um, new parts. These are all new, out of the box. That was the first time I unboxed it. So that's uh, just something to consider. I chose this, first of all, as I was saying, because it supports a low-power um, CPU, and I will show that in just a second. It also has a PCI Express slot on the bottom, because I would like to add some more SATA ports in the future. Supports, uh, I believe, 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM, and it's got four SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per section con second connectors on it. And that was something that I definitely needed, because... I might upgrade this to some SSDs in the future. Has gigabit LAN, which is obviously something that you... It's almost essential for a NAS. USB 3s, which is what I'm going to use to connect my uh, Time Machine backup disk so that I don't have to have it connected to my computer. And I can free up a USB port there. So there's the board. And all of its board-related goodness. The processor that's going to go in that board, which I've already opened just for the sake of the video, is an AMD Sempron 3800 series, and specifically it's a 3850. This is a, I believe, 1.3 or 1.03 gigahertz processor, and I chose it, again, because it's a low-powered CPU, and it's that that's about it. I didn't choose it for any other reason other than that. Um, it's a 25 watt CPU to be exact. So there it is, AMD Sempron 3800 series. Very nice. Coming around to something that I will admit I cheated and didn't buy just yet, uh, and that is RAM. I did include the RAM in the price, however I don't have the RAM that I'm going to be using um, with me right now, it's still on order. But that is included in the $250 price range. Um, I think I spent $44 on it. And the motherboard, by the way, I spent approximately $40 on. These are two 1-gig sticks of Corsair RAM. Really, they're, they're not much. Um, I'm just going to throw them in there as a temporary thing because I have them. This is the 2-gig stick, so I may bump this up to 3 just temporarily. But we'll get there when we get there. Also, something that I did not purchase um, at all, and I don't plan on purchasing, are SATA cables. I have tons of these laying around, and it would be a shame to not use them. So what I've got here are some red ones, some black ones, and some blue ones, which I plan to use um, to correspond to my drives. So the two red ones will be on these red cables. My three 
WD Blacks will be on the black ones, and the blues will be on the blues. So, that I thought was pretty nifty. That was not something I really planned on doing, but um, it just ended up being that way. Drives, I will go over quickly, as they are not part of this build, probably what you're looking for. Um, these are two WD Reds. They are two terabyte drives. Identical, of course. Uh, these are ones that are designed for NAS enclosures because they've got some kind of, I don't know, gyroscopic stability and they have um, variable spindle speed so that they will spin themselves down, not completely off, but to 5400 RPM when they're not in use, which I think is great for power, um, as this is going to be a pretty much low-powered NAS, or at least as low power as I can get it. So I've got two of those. Again, not going to go into too much depth because they are not really part of the build, um, what I'm making this video for. And at last, we come to my favorite part, and the part that I'm most excited for, the case. I have not unboxed this yet. Well, I've unboxed it. I haven't taken the plastic off yet, so you're seeing it. It's the first time I do, and wow, this thing is cool. This is the coolest case I've ever seen. Something just fell off my desk. It's a uh, fractal design. What is it? I'm looking at the box right now. It's a Node 804 case. Um, the, it's a variant of the Node 304 and 504, I believe. Um, very, very sexy looking case. Lots of fans on it, as you can see from the back. This area right here is the power supply and drive bay area, which I will show in just a second. This is the CPU and motherboard area. It's got a nice window on the side with some plastic that I'll take off when I'm done with this build. And there's the front again. Um, I believe on the bottom it has some air vents and um, removable, yes, removable vents so that you can clean it. Also on the side, something that I wanted just because I don't want it taking up room in the case is a slimline optical drive that is actually built in or will be built in when I install it, um, right into the case. So I don't have to worry about that taking up a drive bay. Very, very nice. Looking inside, I will show you part of the reason why I purchased this in the first place. And that is because it has eight drive bays. And the drives hang this way, um, all the way back and in here as well. Technically, this does have ten drive bays. There are two that are mounted on the floor on the other partition. Uh, this is, by the way, a partitioned case, so, you know, I can stick my hand through there right now, but when there's a board I won't be able to. And it's designed for airflow, or something like that. I don't really know what they market it as, and honestly, I don't care. But there it is. That is the case that I will be using for this build. Um, I'm sure that I will talk about this more in depth as the video goes on. Um, I may split this video up into two parts, which is what I think I'll do. I'll go over the parts in this one, and then I will get to building it, if you're interested in that, um, because I know that not everybody is looking for a, a building video. They're looking for suggestions on parts. So, this case, very, very nice. I'm going to enjoy this greatly. Um, and the parts, well, I'll go over the parts again, just in case you don't feel like rewinding. There's an ASRock AM1B Mini ITX motherboard. There is an AMD Sempron 3850 processor, socket A, A1 rather, a Corsair CX430 power supply. I'm using that mainly because of the 80 plus uh, rating on there. And the RAM, which of course I don't have yet, but it is a very similar um, style of RAM. It's Corsair RAM, and again I spent 50 bucks on that. So. All of this, the case, the power supply, and case, power supply, processor, board, RAM, all under 250. And I would say this is a pretty kick-ass NAS, even without drives. Um, it's going to be great. So there you go. That is the $250 NAS build, not including drives, as I've stated many times. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And that is it. So, thank you for watching, and hope you enjoyed.